Um, Would you like to identify yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm Greg. I, I used to live in Orange County, California, and now I live in Denver, Colorado, chasing the dream. Thank you for sharing this experience, and thanks yeah. for being cool. Is it cool if this is shared publicly? Of course, of course. It's a, it's a good message for everyone. I mean, I worked in aerospace for almost seven years, and it was it paid really well, and it was career opportunities, but the longer I stayed, the more I felt like I was not being true to myself. I put on the khakis, I put on the tie, uh, clean shaven and looking nice and being professional. I just, I felt like I was, I was not being me. I felt like I was playing a character. Um, so eventually when I finally had enough of that, I moved out and started doing events again and working in conventions. But once I discovered the transformational festival scene, I just, I knew that was my calling. That was, that was where my skills could be put to use. And it's, uh, it's freeing. I'm right now I'm living on my savings, my 401k from when I was in aerospace and just, uh, it, it's hard, it's frugal. Um, but it's, it's a, it's a calling and, um, I've, uh, I've never felt more true to myself. I've never felt like I, I belong to a community this much. And it's, uh, it's, it's just one of those, uh, those life changing moments. You have to give up your comfort if you're going to truly find happiness. That's, uh, could you, would you, That's what I've learned. Would you be down to take a deep breath? Very good. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for listening. Would you mind taking off your glasses so we can see your eyes out there? There we go. <laughs> what about you? When do I get to hear your story, man? We could do it right now. All right, let's do it right now. You want to? Let's see. Make some chair room. So here's. Do you mind if I show people what you got here? Yeah, absolutely. So what are we looking at? Oh, these are my solar panels. I've got a. I've got a problem with my breathing at night. I have sleep apnea, and uh, my first couple years of of camping at festivals, I was snoring so loud that you would see like the tents every night move a little bit further away. And I felt like I was just being left alone. So I got the CPAP breathing machine and then I got solar panels and then a, a battery pack. I'll grab that and let you see. Um, the whole setup was probably about maybe 300 bucks total, but this powers my breathing machine. It's got plugs for just about everything that you could possibly need. Yeah. Wow. And then the solar panels will bring it to almost a full charge by the end of the day. I can breathe at night. People don't mind being around me, and uh, there's no there's no footprint at all. It's just uh, it's just the sun keeping us all all powered. <sighs> this resource. And and how is this the extent of your possessions, or? Uh, it's my ex the extent of my possessions here. I have, I have some more camping gear in the in the car, but. Oh, that's fine. I mean, do you mind if I show your car and oh, yeah, your no, camp go here? For it. Yeah. I guess I meant. Do you? I don't mean to. If this, you know, I don't mean. I'm curious about, you know, being out here. Um, so this is the extent of what you brought out here, or yeah. what you're with right now. Yeah, right, right now. Uh, Everything I, in the tent. In the I, car. I usually bring a, a lot more camping gear. We bring out like a full kitchen. I've got a kitchen box and a and a propane grill. Um, I've got some mats that I lay down and some solar lights so you can find camp at night. Yeah. Um, which is all great when you've got thousands of people here and you need to find your stuff and you want to live comfortably um, but you know, just for since I'm just here working I don't I don't need to be super comfortable so I've just got the bare essentials got the, the mattress in the sleeping bag the sleeping the solar panels and the breathing machine a couple chairs and what else could you need in life by the way I, th thank you so much for sharing and I would invite you in this see here I am myself so I would invite us in this experience to practice this as just a conversation yeah. and the video or whatever it's do you mind if I continue recording yeah. you can let me know if you want me to stop at any time but I have no secrets yeah this is just observe and remain equanimous in relation to this thing floating around in <laughs> space and time so here we are post LIB which is lightning in a bottle you guys we currently call this a festival in our vernacular. I would like to offer a new, an expanded term for this, which is transformational community practice. 
and I, I kind of, I, I don't kind of, I look, I, I, my perspective on this currently is that we are practicing how do we as efficiently and effectively as possible come into one as, you know, come into community as one together in a sustainable, increasingly sustainable way. Yes. And, and we're really iterating passionately towards the sustainability the I'm in touch with groups who are working on sustainable permaculture year round to be able to host festivals in an abundance context, you know, because right now festival is like a scarcity context term, it could be said, for a festival. It's like a thing you come and do for just a few days. And from my perspective, like transformational communities or, you know, like I, I did a film about retirement communities. So I'm thinking in that sense, transformational communities, you know, where you have the land and you have the festivals all year round. People can come in and out, you know, it's is uh is is like the next evolution of this for me and i feel like we're learning how to do that here you know yeah it's it's kind of like uh at some point about 15 20 years ago people realized that we'd become this this almost disposable culture that anything we want should just be made new and then when it and stops bought. yeah and bought and then when it stops using when it stops being uh convenient when it stops being as shiny or as efficient as something that's brand new uh, we dispose of it and we leave it for someone else to uh, disassemble or to find a purpose for and I think the great thing about one of these festivals is when you walk around the camping area and you see so much upcycled art and so many uh, reused uh, materials bamboo wood uh, tarps uh, blankets I mean, people people see people see still see use and uh, usefulness and and purpose for materials that um, we've forgotten how to how to use. Hmm. And I think uh, I think as these festivals grow, they've they've certainly started to um, hit the the mainstream consciousness, and they're starting to bring in new people who have had no experience with this kind of life and these kinds of. Uh, ethics and ethos and I think that um, if it continues to grow at the rate it has been for the last three or four years I think we could see a, a, a shift uh, in uh, in the younger generations as they move as they move forward as they get older uh, to stop disposing of everything to stop leaving things behind that everything uh, that things don't disappear when you get rid of them that they're still out there in the world and and we have a finite amount of resources, we have a finite amount of space, and if we're really going to uh, to continue living on this planet indefinitely, we need, to, we need to start making the most use out of everything that we have. Mind if I offer a reflection? No, oh, but please do. <clears throat> As I recall, you said uh, when to stop doing this, to stop, you know, that we can learn to not do this and not do that. So I tend to think of that, or I, I, to me, that feels um, like practicing a negative, mm -hmm. like we would learn not to do something. And in my own experience, it seems more sustainable to, pr to practice in the affirmative having embedded the negative, the boundaries of what the negative looks like internally as the structure of that affirmative practice. You know what I mean? What's up, brother? Can we go check in? Hey, yeah. Would you like to be in a video that's going online? Um, no, I just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, brother. This is Greg, by the way. Give him a hug later. Do you drink Bailey's out of a shoe, Greg? <laughs> I'm old Greg. Do you drink Bailey's out yeah. of a shoe, Greg? <laughs> I have all things that are good. <laughs> Do you love me? Could you, could you learn to love you? This video is going online, just so you know. Hello there. Would you like to offer a uh, an offering to the galaxy? Um, be more just more specific. What do you mean by that? Well, imagine the whole galaxy is going to watch this broadcast. Okay. What would you like? Would you like to communicate anything to the galaxy? Um. I would like to communicate to the aliens out there that um, I am with you and I hope to one day connect with you and see you. That's what I would communicate to the galaxy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What about the galaxy that includes this planet? 
Mm, I like I like the extraterrestrials better. Okay. Thank you so much. Would you like to offer a uh, uh, galaxy dream? Dream for the galaxy? Um, I have something I believe in. Um, you are the author to your own life, so write a beautiful story. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste. Would you like to offer, uh, I, I believe you did just offer a dream to the galaxy, for the, a, a galaxy dream. That's kind of how I think of it. A galaxy dream? Yeah, you know, like, what could I, what could we, what would we all wish for all of us, you know? For all of us? Is like, the galaxy dream, you know? There's so many, there's so many little things that, that I wish for people to, to be able to pursue their passions. Uh, I know so many people who have uh, given up on that thing they love to do, um, to do the thing that they feel like they have to do. And I know too many people who are filing paperwork and uh, sending emails all day and confined in clothes that don't feel like theirs uh, while they toil away trying to make sure that they keep the rent paid and keep the power on and pay their insurance. Um, but at the end of the day, they're so exhausted from doing something that they hate that they don't have any of the energy to do the things that they love. And that's what I want for more people that I've met in my daily life. The, the freedom, the opportunities to, to be you and to do what makes you happy. That's, that's what I've found is the most rewarding change I've made in my last in the, few, in the last few years. And um, I, I want that for, for everyone that I know and everyone that I love. Hashtag galaxy dream. Galaxy dream. Thank you. Thank you. What, uh, what, what's a practice that, that you found, that you practiced, that kind of brought you closer, let's say, or, or not closer, it's not a destination, but mm -hmm. just kind of like more in alignment with the yeah, journey? Yeah, put, put back on the right path is... Um, Maybe one or two practices people could, could yeah. try for themselves. It's... Uh, as they wish. First thing I had to do was acknowledge the amount of um, waste in my life. Uh, a lot of wasted energy, a lot of wasted money, a lot of wasted attention that should have been going to bigger purposes, things that actually excite and, and enliven me. Um, and once I started to identify those things that I could do without, um, it freed me up to do the things that I realized I shouldn't have done without. That was, that was the first part of the path, is identifying what I could do without and um, really starting to make goals, uh, figure out, start to whittle down, like, where, where, where do you fit in this world? What, what kind of community do you want to be a part of? And uh, for, for me, it was, it was a lot more, um, I'd, I had to be a lot more analytical about it because my heart, my heart wanders. I, I, I don't trust it. It goes this way, that way. It makes its own decisions. Uh, so some, sometimes I have to remove that and, and really think and, and, and plot a course make those, uh, those logical, um, intellectual decisions to um, keep myself focused. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I'm sorry for being silly in the video. I really do have meaningful things to say, just not like right this let me tell you something. Your silliness is a meaningful thing to have been experienced yeah. in That's this video. That's its own video. special thing all on its own. Um, it well, is. What I do have to offer to the galaxy as um, some, I guess, some words of what I believe in is that, you know, like, you have to do, like, what makes you, like, for example, like, I feel that I was, like, put on, like, I didn't have a dream or a purpose. Oh, whoa, hello, bug. You're going to hurt me really badly. No. He's got pinchers on him. No, those are just like little ears. No, he's still cute pinch. though. Anyway, as I was saying, I believe that like I, like last year I, I felt as if I did not have a purpose and I was sick of living life without any like meaning or... Um, thank you, Nathan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and um, oh, now, um, you know, being becoming more conscious, actually because of lightning in a bottle last year, I was actually scolded and told about like the way of like waste and like I had no consciousness of it at all and um, to wake have that awakening thanks to somebody at a type of festival like this 
um, has brought me to like where I am now. Like I've come so far in a year. Um, I do really meaningful work when it comes to the environment on a global scale. Um, and I also do work on the local level um, at these festivals and um, in my own life um, I've like made the effort to use less and waste less. Um, as you see this, this phone here, I didn't feel the need to replace it once it broke since it's still actually functioning and working um, because it becomes waste. Why do we need to upgrade our phones every year? Um, why do we need to like buy new clothes every week? Um, you know, there's ways that like we could eliminate the amount of waste um, because it ends up in somebody else's backyard and even sometimes our own. And just because we throw it in a bin and we think it goes away, it doesn't disappear. Like these these things exist forever, and we need to, to be part of like the solution of like how are we gonna use less and also what are we going to do with the waste and how are we going to better ourselves as a society um, and as like on a global scale um, to make things better and. Um, not extinct ourselves and any other species um, in the ways that we live. And that's my mission. That's all. That's all, folks. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Cheez Its! And also Cheez Its! And also Cheez Its. But we're gonna pretend they don't have palm oil in them from yeah, Indonesia. There's no food in that food, but they're so delicious. See these Cheez Its here? They're wrapped in one-time single-use plastic made from palm oil that destroyed rainforests in Indonesia. But yet, I'm still eating them. I'm a hypocrite, aren't I? Well, all I can say is there's an American chair in the background of this. Oh, oh, well then it's okay. Th this, this is perfect. Gotcha. Yeah. America. One-time-use plastic around a, a food item that's not good for you made out of palm oil that has destroyed and decimated rainforests. Amen. <laughs> what do you think, viewer? And that's a dried up lake over there, but it's still beautiful. Oh, that's a dried up lake. Uh huh. So I love the symbolism of this because w this this used to be a lake two years ago. Uh, yeah. And here we are in Lockwood, California. Um, I'd say Bradley. Is Brad correct? Bradley, California. And uh, there's a cairn. Um, they're deconstructing stages over there. That was the thunder stage. I believe uh, the thing on the left, the thing on the right was some kind of bar. There were big teapots over there. You can check it out on my public and just publicly online, including on my um, Facebook publicly, all the photos and videos from the festival. But, and then, uh, or you could not do that and you could just come next year or come to some other festival. So this used to be a lake bed and just two years ago. So what I find really powerful about you know, the context of this experience, whether any particular person coming here was aware or not, I wasn't aware coming in, is that um, we're literally having this convergence of all these people who are, who are mindful of um, sustainability and resource use and scarcity and abundance and transformation, all this type of stuff. This is, this is transformation. You know, transformation is when something that we thought was constant changes. You, you realize it in the context of transformation because you believed that it was static before or that it was some way. This was a lake bed, but California's drying up. So what's really powerful about this is that, you know, like I, there's this keen sensitivity to water because we were, we, we were learned a few months ago that in California we're not going to have any water in a year, less than a year now. So times are changing, spaces are changing, resources are shifting.